Cancer impacts thousands of families in our region every year. Recently, Carol Lee McGrath sat down with Jerry Myers, director of the Cancer House of Hope in West Springfield, to learn how that organization works with cancer patients and their loved ones, providing much needed emotional, educational, social, and spiritual support. The mission of the Cancer House of Hope specifically is to support anyone who's had cancer, has cancer, and their friends and family. We offer alternative therapies. We have Reiki, yoga, uh, massage therapy. We have a relaxation group. Uh, we offer wigs and we have brows and prosthetics. Also, uh, we have several different support groups. And they're all offered free of charge and no referrals necessary. We want to make it as easy as possible for our members to come in, be able to utilize our services because they're already going through so many financial challenges and struggles with referrals and things like that. Now, Cindy, you have um, an inspiring story. We're so happy that you're with us. But a year ago, you had some uh, dark moments. Can you tell us about yeah. it? Yeah, one year ago, actually, at this time, I was going through chemotherapy. You know, I was I had a fomestectomy and was going through it. I came to one of the free services for a lecture at the Cancer House. I wanted to learn some more information. Met Jerry, who kindly gave me a tour of the home gave me some of the different options that, of the services they provided. I took full, basically, advantage awareness. I was there quite often because it was a really dark time, and it was hard to share it with family and friends, but all the volunteers there, and Jerry, I, you, I utilized Reiki and massage, went to the classes, the lectures, and for a year now, I've been there at least once, sometimes I think three, four times right. a week. I tell them I'm just going to move in here. And so... Um I know you said that it's free for people, but how are you supported financially? It's all fundraising efforts. We have grants uh, that we go for. Uh, the Rays of Hope is, is a really strong grant supporter of ours. We have fundraising events. Uh, we also have annual appeals and just general donations that come in. Cindy, and I, it's probably extremely difficult to describe, but I feel like every time you know, I, I talk to a friend or a coworker, you always hear somebody is getting diagnosed with cancer. At that moment, for families who get that diagnosis, I mean, how, how do you live through that? You know, I really started putting my efforts on having vision of what the future was going to be like and really started working with health coaches and finding out what I could do because it was tough. And now I turned it into, you know, 10 steps to nourish yourself through cancer. And I really had to become my first best advocate mm -hmm. was finding it. I found it on my own and really taking part of that because sometimes I felt like I felt bad for my family members because I knew what I was feeling but they really couldn't. Right, that's a critical thing because they're, they're trying to support you and love you but they're scared to death Exactly. and they don't know how to support you and, and love you. And I think you. I had to get clear on that. It's like how could you support me? And I had to really look inside and say this is what I need and that's where the Cancer House was really great for being able to talk to people, work through it. And your profession is inspiring people anyway. So how did you use those professional skills to work with other people? Yeah, as a certified empowerment coach, I used to work with people through weight management. Well, now I think kind of given this path, I am now working with women to thrive through cancer and not just survive. Because I find that's, don't go just back to your normal routine. Cancer changes your life forever. So how are you going to thrive through it so that when you go through your daily life, you know, it's different. So now to thrive through it. And you help, obviously you help women and men. Uh, right. Are there a lot of guys that go in or is it uh, mostly women? The largest percentage is women. And actually there's usually around 40% who are breast cancer survivors. That's mm -hmm. the, the, the largest amount uh, of, of one type of cancer that we have at the house. Okay. So we have a lot of services geared like the wigs and the prosthetics. We have a lot of women or people who will actually uh, knit and crochet hats and scarves lap blankets, oh, uh, because when people are going through their journey, it's, you know, they're, they're more fragile and they tend to be uh, on the cold side. Um, and the hats, a lot of the women too, uh, instead of wigs, are more comfortable wearing hats. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice additional service to be able to offer. And, but certainly you want to encourage men to come in, right? Your Absolutely. husbands and yeah. dads or whoever is involved. Yeah, and I want to say, I, I'd add that our volunteer, is, volunteer base is really the backbone of the Cancer House of Hope. I'm the only employee. And uh, it's really run by so the... all the counselors, everybody comes in and volunteers. Well, the counselors are paid on a per hour basis, okay. but we're open every weekday from 10 to four. And on the front lines is our volunteers. Yeah. 
Uh, most of them have been through cancer or going through cancer, have used the house services. So uh, they're very comfortable talking to someone coming in newly diagnosed. And it's amazing to listen to a conversation where someone comes in so distraught and they talk to one of our other volunteers and they, they not only know that there's someone there who has been through the journey, but has, has ended up doing fine. And I think they get hope from that wow. too. But our volunteers do an amazing job. All right, Jerry and Cindy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it.